Hi guys! Oh my god, it's been a long week. A really long week. I don't even know where to begin, honestly. There's so much has happened. Well, luckily, Donna Louise and I have already recorded like a little vlog video when we were in Spain. So if you want to see our thoughts about the competition and like behind the scenes stuff, just go and check that out because today is going to be mostly about the competition itself. So in today's video, I'm basically going to try to rate the puzzles by difficulty, even though I haven't done them all. So I'm going to give you the fastest times because there's just too many. I cannot give you all of it. I'm going to tell you how many people have finished certain puzzle. So I'm going to link everything that's relevant for this event in the description box below, which is basically going to be all the live streams where you can get the results. I'm going to even post like where you can find all the official pictures taken through the competition. I'm really going to try to keep this video as short as possible because I could just be talking for hours about everything that happened. That's why I also wanted to divide it. So like I said, vlog is already out. This is going to be about the puzzles and the competition. And then there's going to be another video coming out, which is going to be about all the puzzles, like the competition puzzles and the puzzles that were not included in the competition. Also like the shirts, the hoodies, everything that basically I brought home from the competitions. And for this video to make a little bit more sense, I decided to divide it into categories. So it's going to be individual pairs and teams, because I think if I did it by days, it would just be a little bit too confusing. So let's just start with the individual category. So individual category was basically first divided into six groups from A to C in the morning and then D to F in the afternoon. And I have to tell you that like, I think the majority of people went to the competition when it started, even if it wasn't their group. And I think when they opened the bags with the puzzles, we were just like, oh my God, <laughs> like, is this actually happening? I think a lot of us expected based on the last year's competition puzzles that this year is just gonna be you know, fairly simple. But after seeing the first puzzle, I think everyone's jaws just dropped because for me personally, it was the hardest puzzle out of the six in the preliminary round. And I'm really happy that I didn't get it. <laughs> I cannot say for Donna Louise, I know she, well, she didn't hate the puzzle, but she did say as soon as she saw the puzzle, she knew she's not gonna be able to make it, which is fine because she would have qualified to the semi-finals anyway, because she's the only one from New Zealand, like I was the only one from Slovenia. And I know that some people think that's really unfair. Why would someone qualify just because they're the only one from the country? But you have to understand that we are not actually able to get some of the puzzles. And the reason why I decided to point that out is because we had breakfast with the girl from the States and she actually said that she never thought of that. America has a really wide range of like puzzles that they can get. Slovenia has a lot less and for New Zealand is even like probably five times worse than for me. That's why it's a bit difficult when you go into the round and some people have practiced that same puzzle and I see it for the first time. So I completely understand how some people will get offended by it because obviously if you didn't qualify and then someone was slower than you and they qualified just because they were the only ones. But at the end of the day, these are the rules and also it's a World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship. So people like to cheer for their own country in the final. So, you know, we want to get as many countries into the finals as possible. So enough talk about the politics of the competition. I don't think anyone wants to hear that. I think it's time to show you all the puzzles from the competition now, but I'm not going to do them in the order that they appeared at the competition. I'm going to do them in the order by difficulty, the way I think they are. So let's just start with the first one. For me, the easiest puzzle was from Group B with the title of New York Postcard. So I actually have a copy of this puzzle, but I don't have a box for it because Vicky brought it as like a, you know, to do practice runs on it. I really actually like the design of these puzzles and I think everyone secretly wished for this puzzle at the competition. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. <laughs> I actually thought my puzzle was quite difficult, but we're gonna talk about that later. What I really like about this puzzle is that it's got a lot of clear sections of where something goes, and Donna Louise and I actually speed run that puzzle the night before the competition started. So I was doing this section and she was doing that one, we were just doing it like sideways. From what I can tell, it was just a really easy assembly and I would definitely be really happy to get this puzzle at the competition. So, the fastest time was 30 minutes and 38 seconds from Teresa, 
and 76 people finished that puzzle. When I talk about how many people finish the puzzle, it's basically like when the time runs out, they have to stop puzzling even if they didn't finish the puzzle, and then they have to count the pieces. It's actually quite cute. So I was like, who's gonna be counting all of that? So you have to do the piles of like 10 pieces, and then they come to your table and they just count how many pieces there are left, so then they can do the placement order based on how many pieces you basically put in. What I thought was the second easiest puzzle was from Group E, Spring in Paris. So this is one of the puzzles when I saw it being pulled out of the bag, I was like, oh my god, I wanted this puzzle. It looks so pretty and it's got really clear sections of where everything goes. But let me tell you something. <laughs> I did the rating by difficulty before I went through the statistic. So this one was actually based on statistic, um, a much more difficult puzzle. So the fastest time for this one was basically 47 minutes and 25 seconds by Laura and only 46 people finished the puzzle. So yeah, <laughs> it looks easy I guess, but it definitely wasn't. So one thing that I want to talk about, but I'm gonna get to that later when we talk about the groups, is basically it's really important to be able to recognize an easy puzzle. And I think that's like the main difference between people who go to the competitions often and they get to learn, you know, what a difficult puzzle looks like, what an easy puzzle looks like, <laughs> because, well, the fact that I placed this as a second easiest and the statistic tells me otherwise, I know that I'm not good at that. And I think I've proven that to myself as well with picking the team's puzzles. Yeah, you're gonna hear everything about it later. But we've already put this puzzle together with Donna Luisa at the hotel when we stayed in Madrid, and it was actually a really enjoyable assembly to do not as a speed puzzle. So the third puzzle on my list is from Group D and it's called Evening in Pisa. So Donna Louise and I actually have done this puzzle as a practice room before the competition and I was also commentating on that group and they asked me how difficult I thought the puzzle was. So when you do puzzle in pairs or in groups you don't really get to experience the entire puzzle but I actually quite like the fact that it's got specific sections, you know, it's got the trees, it's got the tower in the middle. Well, the road at the bottom was quite easy to like separate as well. So based on all of that, I would basically rate the puzzle, you know, how I rated it. But statistic again <laughs> tells me that my order is a bit off. So let me give you the times. The fastest one was 33 minutes and 35 seconds by Alejandro and 56 people finished the puzzle. So the next puzzle is the one that I did from Group C and it's called the Archaeologist's Desk. I have to say that, you know, everyone has the puzzles that they like or enjoy or like are good at. So this is definitely something I'm not good at. Like when the puzzle is really busy for me, it just stresses me out. I much more prefer to have like specific sections of the puzzle. And this one on the picture, it actually looks quite divided. You know, it's got the purple, it's got the green, it's got the yellow. But really when all of the pieces are like lying on the table, nothing stands out. So obviously as soon as I saw the puzzle, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna do the sort for that one because it's just nothing to sort. So I just flipped all the pieces and I normally go by what stands out and I was just staring at the pieces and I'm like, nothing stands out. <laughs> that was awful. I mean, I have to say that, you know, I was quite stressed as well. I had to, for the first 15 minutes, just talk to myself and be like, Jeanette, chill, it's fine, it's just a puzzle, you can do this. So I definitely didn't expect how intense the competition is going to be and I think that's definitely something that, you know, is gonna help me next year. So yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're going to the competition for the first time. It will be intense. You have no idea, it's just the tension in the air when you start doing the puzzle, you just, it's a lot. And I think the most important thing is just to remember, it's just a puzzle, you're just there to have fun and you're gonna enjoy it so much more. Because like this puzzle was a complete and utter nightmare for me. And basically everything else that followed was quite enjoyable because the stress was like, well, the, it was still there, but it was just not as intense because I didn't care about myself anymore as much as I did about like everyone else at the competition. So the fastest time for this puzzle was 40 minutes and 46 seconds by Anna and 65 people finished the puzzle. The next puzzle on the list for me is from Group F and it's called Summer Thunderstorm. 
So let's just talk a little bit about this puzzle. I think the puzzle is absolutely beautiful. I think it's got a nice gradient in the sky. It's got like the thunderstorm going. But doing that puzzle at like, what time was it? 7 p.m. or something like that or 9 p.m. I don't remember what the start time was. It was dark at the time. Let's just point that out. So I feel sorry for everyone that actually ended up in group F. They had a difficult time but I think they still did well. What I really like about that puzzle is that it's got like a slight gradient so you can kind of like divide the sections and also the grass at the bottom was only three rows. Well, technically just two rows if you if you don't count the edge, so that was not too bad, which is definitely not what I can say for group A. <laughs> so the fastest time for this puzzle was 49 minutes and 58 seconds by Soroya, and 40 people finished the puzzle. I know I'm giving you my order now because, you know, that's how I decided to do the video, but I'm gonna show you what the order would be as well, based on the fastest time. So the last puzzle was from group A and the title of this one was Lupinos. I spoke about it a bit earlier, but it's just like when this puzzle came out, I think everyone was just like, okay, forget anything you knew about the competition, literally any puzzle could be in it. Like honestly, that one was so difficult. I think the reason why it was so much more difficult because with the last puzzle that I was talking about, you had the majority of the sky, which is basically where you get the gradient. And with this one, the sky was only like a third of the puzzle and then everything else. Like I know the flowers were like pink and purple and like some whitish in between, but it was just, that puzzle was just hell. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so glad I didn't get it. Because I have this thing, like if I think that I'm not gonna be able to finish on time, I completely like freeze, <laughs> sort of. I forget how to puzzle. So I'm sure if I got that puzzle, I would just be like, oh my God, there's no way I'm finishing that. But a lot of people did it and they all had the same conditions and that's all that matters. It's fair for everyone equally. And the fastest time for this puzzle was 44 minutes and 59 seconds by Mercedes and 34 people have finished the puzzle. So moving on to the semi-final puzzles. And as you can see, they're displayed right here. So obviously, as soon as we saw the bags come out on the tables, we knew it was the Circle of Life puzzle because the box is square. So yeah, I was honestly, I cannot say that, but <clears throat> I was really scared. So we basically done two that Vicky brought from the UK and it was the donut one and it was the ocean one, which was basically also a part of the, the semi-finals. So I had to get the one that I haven't done, obviously, because that was following me throughout the competition, just get the puzzles you've never seen before. So I didn't really know how to feel about this puzzle because what I've learned with doing the donuts and the ocean one, it was basically like, in a way easier to just do sections of colors because when you have the circles around it, it's just like the entire puzzle. But I was doing it in pairs with Donna Louise, so I thought that's why it was a bit more difficult because I didn't know what was on her side and she didn't know what was on my side. So it was basically all of the pieces all over the, the table, basically. But I have to say, that out of the two puzzles, I'm just gonna keep them here. And if I had to rate them, which I did, I would say that the Pokeball was easier and the Ocean was the more difficult one out of the two. I think it's just because it's so dark, in my opinion, it just seems harder automatically. But the results, again, <laughs> showed something else. So let's talk about that. So the fastest time for Pokeball was 45 minutes and 22 seconds by Kristin and 122 people have finished the puzzle. When with the ocean one, the fastest time was 36 minutes and 46 seconds by Alejandro and 147 people have finished the puzzle. So based on the results, I proved again that I have no idea what's supposed to be easy and what's supposed to be difficult. But on the other hand, I really enjoyed this puzzle. I did full sort technique for this one and I think a lot of people didn't do it and they kind of like slow themselves down because of it because the circle puzzles are a bit bigger so it just takes a lot of space you know and you can't really start with the frame to have the puzzles around there and I could see that people who had all the pieces spread all over the board it was just difficult for them to build from the inside so I was quite happy that I went with the full sort technique for this one because I think when you have like a very specific gradient it's just 
better to do that, I don't know, that's my experience. So I want to talk a little bit about the semi-final round because obviously you don't puzzle alone anymore, you're sharing a table. So I had this really nice guy next to me from Portugal, I think his name is João, I'm not sure if I said that right. I know I had like multiple practices, so he was actually really nice and let me use the tape of recording of both of us when puzzling and I think one thing you have to remember when puzzling with someone is just like don't stress about it because I've had some different people telling me that it's like it's more difficult because you compare yourself all the time but for me it was just like I don't know if it was because he was such a nice guy or just I don't know it just felt like I wasn't alone in it I didn't even look at how quick he was I was just puzzling away and just like you get so involved in doing your own puzzle that you don't know what's going on around you but it just, you know, it just felt a bit nicer that I knew I wasn't alone in all of that. <laughs> and now to the final puzzle from 2024 catalogue that no one has seen before. And the title of that one is Mars Amemi Sicily. So the final puzzle in the individuals, right? And again, you get to puzzle with someone. And it's really weird that I'm showing you the sides because at the final I had someone on that side. In the semi-final I had someone on that side. So yeah. It's just automatic. So there was this really nice Spanish guy, Rafa, next to me, and he actually had his girlfriend competing as well, but she was way faster. She was like on table 20, we were like all the way back. Ooh, I forgot to show you. Okay. Nah. What did I do with them? Ah. So, yeah, I forgot about them. I brought them home, but I think I'm missing. Oh no. Yeah, I'm missing my final one. I think it was 110. I have given it away with the puzzle accidentally. I was supposed to get it back. <laughs> well, when I gave the puzzle away because I never wanted to see it again, I didn't like it at all. I left my, you know, name tag in it and I forgot to take it back. So it's okay. I'll get all of them next year. It's fine. So basically, yeah, I, I brought them home as well. You know, it's special to have them from the competition. But anyway, so yeah, let's talk about the puzzle. I didn't like it. I already said that. It's just it was really busy and I don't like when it doesn't have specific sections. So I did the full flip method on it. I started with the sky because it was the most obvious thing. Then I did the roof and then just, you know, start to move down and then all of the chairs at the end. Oh, I didn't like those. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm actually really proud of myself. I didn't finish, like I said, I would be grateful if I could finish it in top 50. Like I wasn't even close, let's just say that. So let's go through the timings. So the fastest time was 37 minutes and 59 seconds. And that was Alejandro who basically won for the second year in a row. Like he's so fast. I don't know how he can do it. It's just, I don't know, well done. <laughs> but I ended up 164th with my time of 1 hour 19 minutes and 52 seconds. So 164th out of 579 people, which I think is actually quite a decent result. Like, you know, I could definitely improve, <laughs> but going there for the first time, experiencing the competition for the first time, I'm really proud of myself, actually. I'm even proud of myself to just getting through the competition. No, I'm just kidding. It was actually really fun. Like after the first day, everything was just so enjoyable. And yeah, I think it's time to move on to pairs now. So pairs were also divided into three groups, A, B and C, and then we had the final as well. And something to note about doing pairs is very different than going individual because I've never practiced with anyone. I know Donna Luisa has done a lot of practices, but for me personally, I just did that one with my sister and it wasn't great. So it's a lot of things like deciding who's going to do which part of the puzzle or like, you know, if you want to do it upside down, side to side, all of that is really important. And I think we kind of already agreed from the get go that I'm just going to be puzzling upside down because I don't look at the picture anyway <laughs> and she tends to look at the picture a lot. So I just normally go by shapes and stuff where I just take one color and puzzle in my lap. Yeah, <laughs> I do that a lot and um you know then just put it where it's supposed to go in the book like within the frame so definitely something i would point out is just like try to puzzle with other people even if it's not speed puzzling they don't have to be fast it's just like trying to learn 
that you're not gonna know where all the pieces are you're not gonna know what the entire picture is like there's gonna be so many parts that you're not gonna assemble they just you know you have to kind of let go and just focus on what you are doing so that was i think like one of the hardest things for me as well so again i'm gonna divide the puzzles by difficulty and then the final puzzle is gonna be separately because well if you've seen the live stream you know that the final puzzle has nothing it cannot be compared to anything we've done in the preliminary rounds so what i thought was the easiest puzzle from pairs was from group a and it's called student days so I got this puzzle for myself because I really liked it and I've actually already assembled it. We had Donna, Louise and Carolina. Carolina came to see us in Madrid as well. So us three basically put this puzzle together and it was really enjoyable. Like I know I said I don't like busy images, but that mostly goes for like when speed puzzling because it's, it's just so much going on that you get to enjoy the puzzle so much when you're just taking it slowly. But for speedrun, this one is definitely, you know, wasn't easy. But when you see the rest, you're going to understand why I thought this one was the easiest one. So the fastest time for this one was 32 minutes and 20 seconds by Teresa and Marquetta from Czech. And 88 people finished the puzzle. So the next puzzle is the one that we did in group B. And the title of this one is Ludicrous Library. I don't have this puzzle with me anymore. Donna Louise has taken it. I didn't want to see it ever again. It was awful. <laughs> Like, if you thought that the first image was busy, well, this one was worse because it's just the stairs going everywhere and upside down and oh my God, it was just, everything was everywhere. Like, I didn't know what happened. And at one point I was just like, I have to shape sort. I think I shape sorted like not even halfway through the puzzle, but I had to because I literally had nothing else to go from. It was just everything was everywhere. So yeah, I did not enjoy that puzzle as you can tell. And uh, the reason why it ended up second out of the three is because when I saw the third puzzle, we actually sped run it with Donna Louise before at the hotel with bed lighting with a lot bigger table. So it was a lot harder to reach. I just said that that puzzle has to be more difficult. But really, again, when looking at the results, it actually appears that our puzzle was the most difficult out of the three. So the fastest time for this puzzle was 37 minutes and 38 seconds by Sarah and Tobias from Sweden, and 64 pairs have finished the puzzle. So we actually ended up 33rd with like one hour, five minutes and 59 seconds. And there was like this thing when three groups finished within like five seconds. And we actually thought that we just missed qualifying for like 36 seconds because it didn't say anything on the on the results page. We were kind of like okay with that because it would be a really difficult day on Saturday doing like all three categories. So we were like okay that's fine we can commentate <laughs> it's okay. And obviously later on we managed to get into the final so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that when I talk about the final puzzle so you're gonna know what happened. So the last puzzle was from group C and the title of that one is Colorful Underwater Species. So that's basically the puzzle that Donna Louise and I did a practice run on and it was just awful. Awful. <laughs> like, I cannot tell you, I absolutely hated it. It was torture. We did it at like 10.30 p.m. We were doing it for one hour, then they turned the lights off on us. So we had to like take it back to the room and reassemble it tomorrow morning to just, you know, keep working on it. And I just said, if someone gets this puzzle, this is gonna be torture. But then after seeing the results, I actually realized that having a good daylight, being rested, all of that stuff, having better tables, resulted in a lot of like quicker times because Vicky and Juby did the puzzle as practice run as well. And I think they beat their time by like 20 minutes or something like that. So yeah, a lot of things help. So when I saw the final results, I was like, maybe I would prefer to have this one than the one that we just had. So the fastest one for this one was 33 minutes and 15 seconds by Gisela and Alejandro and 85 people finished the puzzle. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Definitely easier. I don't know, for me it's just like when I see that a puzzle is dark, I just automatically jump to a conclusion that, oh, it has to be difficult then because it's not, you know, when it's bright, it just seems like it's going to be easier to see the difference or something. I don't know. But let's talk about the final puzzle now. So the final pairs puzzle was basically a thousand piece puzzle and the title of that one was Boston 2189. 
So let me tell you a quick story about that. So as I mentioned earlier, Donna Louise and I didn't actually know that we qualified to get into finals. So what happened was I finished my final puzzle for individual. I go out and Maya, who is Alma's mom, is waiting there and she's like, did you see my messages? And I'm like, no, I didn't. What, what happened? And she was basically like, you qualified. Like there was a mistake. I don't know what happened, but three pairs basically went to the finals. They were not supposed to be in the finals before and we were one of them. And honestly, when I heard the news, in a way I was happy because I'm like, oh, I get to do another puzzle. And then when I saw the puzzle, I was just like, yeah. I would be quite fine not doing this puzzle. It was awful. Like, have you seen that puzzle? Only nine people, well, nine pairs, have finished the puzzle. It was dreadful. But the one good thing about it was we were all the way to the back because obviously we barely made it to the final. So we got literally the last table back. Which one was it? 97, I think, like out of 100. So we were basically all the way to the back, next to the barriers. So we were basically chatting to the people who were just watching the puzzling. And as soon as we saw the puzzle, we knew that there's no way we are gonna finish it. So what we did, we just enjoyed it. And we're like, it doesn't really matter how much we do it, as long as we just, you know, keep puzzling. There was a point though, where I was just like, oh, I wish we only had 90 minutes because it's driving me insane, but we managed to do more than half of it and I'm really proud of us. So let me tell you the results now. So the fastest time for this puzzle was 1 hour 32 minutes and 18 seconds by Gisela and Alejandro. Like I mentioned before, only 9 pairs finished and we placed 95th with 549 pieces. So we've done more than half, which is amazing. So 95th out of 340 pairs, which, you know, is the top third <laughs> it's great i mean i'm not gonna complain at all like when you go to the competition you're just thinking about oh my god i have to place well but then when you're there you don't really care anymore it's just about puzzling you know talking about puzzle meeting other people and the entire experience is like at the end of it you don't really care about the results anymore well maybe the top people feel different because they, they've got prizes to win I knew that I'm not gonna win anything even before I left for Spain so I'm just like I'm getting puzzles that's my prize and I got to meet people that's even better prize <laughs> you know so yeah oh my god I'm talking so long this is gonna be the longest video I think it's time to move on to the teams puzzles now so teams were basically divided into group A and B and then we had the final as well. So in groups A and B you basically got four puzzles and you had to pick two that you're going to be working on. And this is where it gets <laughs> really complicated because yeah we didn't know which puzzles to pick and we basically picked the most difficult puzzle I think in the entire competition. Well I don't know if in the entire competition because the final pass puzzle was very difficult but definitely the most difficult out of all of the team's puzzles. So I didn't really mix and match like the puzzles from group A and B, so I'm just gonna go by difficulty based on group A and then based on group B and give you the times for those. So the puzzle that I thought was the easiest from group A is called the Shell Collector. What I really like about that puzzle is that it's got very clear sections and it's really easy to divide between people. Like, oh, that's the top section and this is the bottom section and then you can have two people working on the top two people working at the bottom because that's really important when you're doing like puzzling in groups and you know how I mentioned with the pairs you kind of have to decide oh I'm going to be working on this section or like who's going to be doing it upside down so in my opinion that was the easiest puzzle out of both groups and the quickest time for that one was 36 minutes and 5 seconds by a team called non-stop so I didn't do how many people finished because you do two puzzles so you could have picked the more difficult one first. It takes up so much time and you would actually be able to finish the second one and you just didn't because the first one took so long. And also a good thing on the website, you can actually check the times for each specific puzzle. It's not just like you get the combined times but then you can check everything separately as well which is amazing. So for the second puzzle, I would put the Panorama One Night in Berlin. When we saw that puzzle, even though it's really dark, it seemed just like one of the easy puzzles to do and maybe the obvious ones, because again, you have the bottom section, you've got the top section, and also because it's panorama, it's like, it's a lot shorter and a lot wider. 
So then it's a lot easier maybe for people to puzzle. So when we saw that puzzle, we actually went to check other 1000 piece panoramic puzzles and we found the one that we did later on. And we were like, oh my God, this one looks so easy, you know, because it's so bright and colorful. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you more about it later. But the fastest time for this puzzle was basically 43 minutes and 41 seconds by a team called Puzzle Hustle. So the third hardest puzzle from Group A, I would say, is Riverside Town. So that puzzle was actually really busy, but when you're gonna see the fourth puzzle, you're gonna probably understand why I decided to put this one as a third one. Like, even though a lot is happening, I think you still got quite clear sections of where you can divide. You've got the river, you've got a little bit of the sky, you've got, you know, the buildings and stuff. And it just doesn't seem, you know, too repetitive because you want to have different texture, a little bit of different colour to be able to, you know, put the puzzle together more easily. And the fastest time for this puzzle was basically 51 minutes and 38 seconds by a team called Pistagoras. The most difficult puzzle for me from group A was ladies brunch. So at first when I saw the picture of this puzzle, it would be like an immediate grab for me, like I would definitely go for that puzzle. But then when we had a closer look, it's basically just like green and pink and there's not much detail to go from and it's just, you know, you want to kind of have like smaller sections. It's easy to be a general after the war, right? Because when you hear what we picked, oh my god. Uh, what were we thinking? But yeah, anyway, even though it had two really clear sections, it was still like, there was just not that many detail. And one thing I've learned now is better to have a bit more detail than having nothing at all. So the first time for this puzzle was 51 minutes and 27 seconds from a group called Nonstop. Let's talk a little bit about knowing of how easy and how difficult the puzzles are. So, as I mentioned a little bit about seeing the panoramic puzzle, the one that Group A had before us, we kind of called it, like, as soon as we found that there's another version of this same puzzle, we're like, okay, that's probably gonna be in Group B. And I've actually called it, and Juby said, oh, this one looks quite easy. And I was like, yeah, that one looks easy. And we actually decided if we get this puzzle, we are definitely taking it, like, no questions asked. Because people in Group A seem to be doing really well with the panoramic one. But there were two things we didn't realize and they're really important things as well so for the first puzzle that they had the night one had a lot taller buildings and the night sky had stars it had more clouds it was like a lot happening at the top for the one that we picked it was basically like really it didn't have a lot happening so the bottom section like the buildings weren't as tall and then the top section we had like what three clouds no we had three hot air balloons and i think like four clouds or something like that that was basically it no stars nothing and on the picture on the box it actually looks quite obvious to see like the lines of i don't know but it's like you can see different shades in the puzzle or well, let me just tell you that was not the case and also i love ravensburg well Ravensburger. They actually corrected me. It's supposed to be Ravensburger. So I love that quality of the puzzles, don't get me wrong. But with the panoramic picture, it was just something different. It wasn't like a standard Ravensburger quality. It was like, I don't know, it just wasn't as obvious which pieces go together. I don't know how to explain, but with like, when I do a normal puzzle, I just see the shape of the piece and I know almost immediately what has to go in. That wasn't the case with the panoramic one. So we basically went by the Cinderella shoe method, as Donna Louise liked to call it. We had all of the pieces sorted by shape. It was literally like one by one. Just go and see which one's gonna fit. And oh my God, that was, that was a disaster, honestly. But let's talk about the easiest puzzle first. We'll return to Orange Hell a bit later. So the puzzle I thought was the easiest in group B is Lisola di Burano. So yeah, that was the puzzle that was actually really good to divide as a team puzzle because it had the sky, it had like the river, the houses had specific colours so it was quite easy to like separate them. But like I said, unfortunately we picked it as a second puzzle. So we were left with like 51 pieces out. So we didn't actually finish it but I was still proud of myself. Like it just, 
Like we've literally missed like three minutes on it. It took us like one hour and two minutes to do basically almost the entire puzzle. And all we had left was a bit of like the sky, which was gradient anyway. So we know better next time. And the fastest time for this puzzle is 40 minutes and 42 seconds by a team called Egg Tyler. I don't know how to say it, oopsie. So the next easiest puzzle from Group B, I would say is West Coast Tranquility. So we didn't pick that puzzle, so I don't know how difficult it is exactly, but having all the white lines, I think it just, you know, we've heard from other people that it was kind of easy to just divide the puzzle and everyone was just doing like their own section. So yeah, I don't have this puzzle with me, Donna Louise took that one, so I don't know actually how difficult it would be to put it together because I'm never gonna have a chance to do so, but I'm sure if Donna Louise does, she's gonna, you know, share her thoughts about it. But the fastest time for this puzzle was 35 minutes and 59 seconds by a team called The Misfits. The third puzzle from Group B is The 50s. So this is actually the puzzle that I have with me and the reason why I didn't want to pick it is just because there's so much going on. But looking at it now, <laughs> I would just wish to have this puzzle because even though there's so much happening, it's got clear sections. So we've got the yellow, we've got the red, we've got this TV here, we've got the camera. You know, it's just like, there's a lot of clear sections that we just didn't have with the orange hell one. And oh my God, I'm complaining about that puzzle so much. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. Anyway, probably not the best group puzzle, but anything was better than the one that we picked. And yeah, the fastest time for this puzzle was basically 46 minutes and 12 seconds by a team called Four Riders. And let's move on to the most difficult puzzle, I think, of the entire competition, A Day in Paris. Yeah, that puzzle. I basically told you everything about it already, but now that you've seen a picture of it, it's just like... <laughs> Oh my goodness. I mean, does anyone just buy this puzzle and does it leisurely? Because there's nothing leisure about this puzzle. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awful. I have to say that like my mojo when doing the puzzle and all we had left was just the sky. I was just like, I'm done. Can we just like literally stand up and walk out? Like I couldn't. It was just too much for me. I don't know. So I was so pleased that Donna Louise just kept, you know, she was just like, keep going, keep going, it's fine, we've got this, we're just gonna go one piece at a time, one piece at a time. And I think it really helps because we kind of divided, like me and Vicky were working on like this section of the puzzle and then Juby and um, Donna Louise were working on that side. And it was nice that it's like, we were just doing this section and you could see that their section was like filling in as well. So yeah, I genuinely didn't think we were gonna finish the puzzle in three hours, honestly. Like, wow. I'm disappointed in our choice of the puzzles and Donna Louise was actually the only one who was like, I don't wanna do the puzzle. And us three were like, no, it looks so easy, we're gonna do it. So we said for next year, we're gonna pick two puzzles and then we're gonna put those on the floor and just do the other two because obviously we don't know how to pick puzzles. <laughs> but yeah. And the fastest time for this puzzle was one hour, nine minutes and six seconds by Super Nanas. So what I thought was the easiest puzzle out of the two is Aria Aria Gorgin. Well, the reason why I thought that this is gonna be the easier puzzle is because it's got very specific sections. So we basically did like a full sort on it and then just decided to go with the obvious colors first. So we were building the puzzle together. There was drums outside <laughs> because there was like a marathon happening. And oh my God, I have to tell you, it was throwing me off. Honestly, it was just like, it wasn't even a melody. It was just like, doom, 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 doom. I'm like, how am I supposed to concentrate? So I definitely think that being in a back row was a bit more difficult. No, just kidding. It's dumb anyway, it's probably just as loud on the other side. But um, yeah, I thought it was actually the easier puzzle, but then when I saw the statistic and how well we did as well, it seems like the other one was quicker. So the fastest time for this puzzle was 47 minutes and 45 seconds by the team called Las Chicas Checkers. So much depends on the puzzle, it's insane. But we basically ended up 20th with this puzzle and we finished it in one hour, four minutes and 24 seconds. So once you finish the puzzle, you don't really have time to take any pictures or anything. You just have to quickly pack it away and, you know, bring the other puzzle up. 
So the second puzzle we did, which I thought was harder, but it turns out it wasn't, is called Puzzle People. So yeah, this puzzle was like a lot. <laughs> so with like a busy puzzle like that, you can't really do sorting. So what we decided to do is do a full flip and just eliminate the frame, because once you have the frame to work within it, it's just so much easier because you don't realize how close things are. A lot of the times you think that it's a lot bigger and then you're just like, oh, that connects, that connects. So basically we were just like picking the specifics like, I don't know, pink dress with flowers and you've taken them out and then someone else was doing, I don't know, the white flowers and I was doing the grey tops and all of that stuff. So we were basically just doing everything together, just putting everything in. And then one thing that I cannot stress enough is just like do shape sorting. When it's a puzzle like that, that it's very busy and you've got a lot of sections done and you have specific shapes throughout the puzzle you just do shape sorting because then instead of looking through i don't know 200 pieces left you're just gonna have to look through those i don't know 30 40 pieces from that specific shape so that really saves time when putting the puzzle together so the fastest time for this puzzle was 40 minutes and 51 seconds by a team called the misfits and we ended up 68th with this puzzle with 1 hour 23 minutes and 3 seconds. So the fastest team finished both of the puzzles in 1 hour 30 minutes and 25 seconds and the team is called Las Chicas Checkers. And we ended up 39th which is amazing, <laughs> like we did not expect that at all, with 2 hours 27 minutes and 27 seconds. So 39th out of 159 teams. Well, that's something I can say that I'm really proud of. So, oh my god, I've been talking for so long that my battery died in between and I'm just really hoping that I can cut this video down to at least like half an hour because I think I've got like three hours of talking material. <laughs> but anyway, those are all the puzzles done. We've gone through all of the puzzles, we've done all the best times, we've done like some sort of like rating by difficulty. And as I mentioned, if you want to hear more about the competition, you can always check the vlog. I've got about 20 minutes of it, Donna Louise got about 20 minutes of it, so you can listen to everything there. All the links connecting to the competition are gonna be in the description box below. And then, like I mentioned, in the next video, I'm gonna show you my entire puzzle haul and everything else that I brought from Spain basically because I don't know if you've noticed but I've got two special puzzles in the back because also as part of the competition they were doing a Guinness World Record on like putting the puzzle together and they've done it and we broke another record I'm not completely sure on the specific of it but I think the biggest like puzzle competition in the world so I'm technically <laughs> one out of the like i don't know 600 people who attended the competition i'm part of the record how amazing is that that's something to tell my kids when i get them if i get them <laughs> so you know <laughs> i just hope that we are gonna break it every year now so i wanted to talk a little bit more about the commentating as well but basically what happened was when we started to get ready for the competition and started to like post videos about it I think Alfonso just got in touch with us and asked us to do like the live stream commentating in English, which I thought was really sweet. I think he was just so grateful that we were promoting the event without even knowing like who the organizers are or anything like that. So that was just like probably like a little thank you for him as well because I loved commentating, <laughs> like absolutely enjoyed it. So I think this is where I'm gonna have to end this video because it's gonna be too long as is. But if you have any questions of something that maybe you want to know about the competition or I forgot to mention or you want me to talk more about, just write it in the comments down below and I'll make sure to talk more about it in the next video, which is also going to be still related to the puzzling competition because I'm going to be talking about everything I brought back from Spain. So yeah, anything else you want to know, just ask me in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. Bye!